What is going on, everybody? It's the France, and we're here for a Monday Night Raw review. Or I should say, Monday Night Raw is desperate review. As WWE, as you see on the layout here, we have a new WWE champion. How did this happen? Because, well, last Wednesday, last week, something happened that WWE did not see coming. That nobody in the wrestling community probably predicted was going to happen this early. But AEW beat Monday Night Raw, not in total viewership, but the 18 to 49 demographic. The key demographic that all, that WWE, AEW, and all of the promotions and advertisers pine for. That's where, because 18 of course, is where you're trying to sell all your items, especially during the time that these shows go on. Kids are in the morning, adults are like, like higher up adults are in the afternoon, late at night. But this is supposed to be the 18 to 49. WWE's Raw lost for the first time ever. And what was originally supposed to happen tonight was a tag team title match between the RK Bros and Bobby Lashley and MVP. We spent a whole show last week having and ha half the show, the first hour be half of a gauntlet, and the mess the like second half of the third hour be the rest of the gauntlet. With MVP and Bobby Lashley being added in as a late thing and ended up winning. That was supposed to be a match tonight. But when we got to Friday, after AEW's demo was shown to be better than Raw's, we get to Friday, we get a SmackDown going on, and we get Coming up on Monday, Bobby Lashley versus Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. Then, today, Big E comes on to social media and is like, Ah, the cat's out of the bag, so I'm going to spill it right here. I'm cashing my Money in the Bank contract tonight, and I'm going to be the next WWE Champion. Now, the match between Randy Orton and Big E and Bobby Lashley, of course, that was going to happen. Big E could have sat there and said, I'm cashing in, and then it's the good old bait and switch because WWE likes to rope you in to think that you're going to see a cash in, and then we have Big E's music hit. This is what could have happened. Big E's music hits, no Big E. We go to the back, and Big E's laid out. Who laid out Big E? What happened to the cash in? That could have been them out. They could have went or something else, but they didn't, thankfully. And in the end, Big E is the new WWE Champion. It just feels like it was rushed. And it feels like they just hot-shotted this to get it over with. And just make it so that the so they can they can get as many viewerships as they can get. Now people are gonna go out there and like, oh, they didn't do this because AEW beat them in the ratings. No, no, no. It was because football was back. You had the Raiders and the four in this and the Baltimore Ravens tonight. This is the first time I think in a while Monday Night Football on the first week only had one game instead of two, but that's neither here nor there. But no. You expect me to believe that WWE made all these changes because between Wednesday and Thursday, someone went, oh shit, we have football on Friday, on Sun on Monday. We have to do something because the tag team title match isn't going to be a big enough draw. Even though I think it was going to be a big enough draw because you have Bobby Lashley, Randy Orton, Matt Riddle, and BP. It would have been good enough. But no, here we are having a WWE Championship match in the main event and then Big E cashing in. The rest of the show, you could just skip it all and you wouldn't miss much of anything. Except for after Charlotte, Charlotte 9000 took on Shayna Baszler. And we got a reversal of what happened last week between Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Nick, um, Alexa Bliss gave her a Charlotte 9000 inspired Lily doll. And yeah, Charlotte didn't hasn't looked any better. Never looked better. So we go to the ring and out comes Big E. He comes to the ring, out comes RK Bros, out comes MVP and Bobby Lashley. MVP does bring up the fact that they were supposed to have a tag team title match tonight, which I'm surprised they actually had him mention that. The way WWE likes to do things, it wouldn't surprise me if they would have just forgotten all about it and pretended like the tag team match never happened. 
So with everything that happened tonight and Biggie winning the WWE Championship, it looks like that tag team title match will probably be at the pay per view, and they'll do something with Biggie. I don't know, but we'll talk about what I think about Biggie winning the title later on, as long with what happens with Bobby Lashley and Oldberg, because that's something that's going to happen in a couple months. And of course, MB, um, New Day, um, Biggie is just being all happy and like being goofy, talking about like he's gonna catch on this, but he's gonna catch on that person. Don't make any mistake, he's gonna catch in. Matt Little speaks. I have to mute. I can't stand the guy when he talks. I just can't. Not for nothing. We get an RKO out of nowhere to end this segment. Not much you have to talk about here, but that is the main event of the show. We see Wild Women's Champion Charlotte not that submitting backstage, pure face Shayna Baszler in a championship contenders match. And I have to ask, why does every champion, why, why does every match that a champion is in non title now has to be a championship contenders? Oh, that's right, because they want to make, an, they want to give you an excuse why if the champion win, loses, that they have to put the title on line, unless your name is Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox, because they beat the women's tag team champions not once, not twice, but three times, two of those being championship contender matches, and they haven't gotten their title matches and have been relegated to backstage segments where they're on TV for about five seconds. Anybody else have a problem with this? Because I have a problem with this. Shabbat 9000 is backstage with Sarah Shabbat asking about Baszler's confidence and she can beat her. She says, Baszler and Jax are both great competitors, but Baszler got... Can't won't get to her level if she continues to be drowned down dragged down by dead weight. Teaching I'm going to teach a lesson to Baszler as she did with Jax last week and declares I am I am the best to do this in the ring is her throne and I will be champion forever. So we get this match and it was a pretty decent match. That ain't way better than what they did with Charbot and um, fucking Nia Jax. I mean, Nia Jax needs to be removed from WWE television. It must be nice being related to The Rock. But we come, we go to commercial break, we come back, and Nia Jax appears because, of course she did. She gets on the apron, and let's see here. She gets on the apron, Jax distracts, um, Basil gets hit with a big boot. She doesn't get hit with a natural selection. Or anything else. She gets hit with a big boot and gets pinned. What? Are you kidding me? Talk about laziness. Now, next week, we have to suffer to it. Nia Jax versus Shayna Baszler one on one. This is going to be the finale between these two. I don't want to see this any fucking more. Out comes Alexa Bliss. She brings a gift box. She talks to Nia, talk, not, talks to the Sharbot, and actually just she's it was it, what she was saying was funny as fuck. She tells Sharbot to have some fun and let her hair down, which uh, Sharbot's like, my hair is down. Bliss holds it, gets it, tells her to take it, Flair, and she says no. Bliss says yes, no, yes, no. The crowd chants yes. Flair finally takes and admits that she's got, she does love gifts. Takes a peek and she's not happy. She pulls out a Lily doll with blonde hair, a replica around her waist. Bliss says this is Sh Charlie, and she looks just like you. And the fans chant Charlie. She said she wanted to give Flair something to play by and play with after she takes the title of Extreme Rules. Blair, bliss her what Flair said earlier about not needing anyone. But she says everyone deserves a friend. Even a narcissistic, self that's narcissistic, self absorbed bitch like you. And she said it with such the with, with such glee and the biggest smile on her face. Bliss um bliss is having fun with what she's doing. I know everyone can try rag on her. Was pretty much stealing or being um, gift given the um, Bray Wyatt's gimmick only on her uh, giving the gimmick in her version, 
but she is clearly just having fun with what she is doing. Like, it's the best she is, the fun, most fun I think she's had in her career on WWE television. And you just see it with her. The Sherbot, the. She, she's going to adult less into extreme rules because she's got, because she's going to be getting sent to a locked up in a padded room. She tosses Charlie at her when, and knocks Lily off the ring post. Bliss is pissed. She attacks and goes, goes at it. Flag is sent to the outside. She runs back in. Bliss counters with a, with a code red. Raises the title belt while she, while in the air while clutching Lily as the Sharbot is on the floor clutching and looking on. Should be interesting. It wouldn't surprise me if Bliss wins the Women's Championship at Extreme Rules. Which, by the way, this pay-per-view coming up is called Extreme Rules. You know the night, the one night of the year WWE goes extreme. Where are all the extreme matches? Where is all the extreme stipulations? Where's the hardcore matches? The chairs matches? The tables matches? The ladder matches? The falls count anywhere matches? Where is everything? I, I I just don't know. This just is another reason why. I remember a couple of years ago. I think it was like ten years ago, actually. They had extreme rules. You remember when um, Alberto Del Rio took on um, RVD, and the only spot of the entire show that was hardcore or extreme was RVD using it using a um, trash can, and I think falling, getting like trying to move, but ended up splashing through the trash can. That was like the only hardcore spot that that that, that night. Everything else was just no, normal, boring ass matches. Looks like we're going down that route again with extreme rules, but we still have another week. We'll see what happens. Oh boy, Jinder Mahal and Shvia and Shanky take on Drew McIntyre and the Viking Raiders. So I guess they got rid of the Rock for Drew McIntyre to stab his sword into, so he's just walking to the ring with it now. Um. It just felt like um, Drew McIntyre was in this match majority of the time. Eric got in, but um, Ivo did not. Drew McIntyre made the Mickey Nook driver out of nowhere. It's a big pop. He waits for Shanky now. He delivers the Claymore kick. Viking Raiders keep Jinder Mahal and Via down at ringside. One, two, three. And Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre gets the win as the Raiders and him pose and celebrate. Worthless match, not worth our time. Moving on. Biggie is backstage with when Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods appear. They reunite, reunite. Woods says Biggie is catching the night and he deserves it. He mentions he's doing it. He's doing it in Kofi's hometown of Boston, which of course Kofi gets hyped up. Biggie says, Kofi, you've been there, done that. You got any advice for me? Kofi goes on that I've told you many freaking times that you don't that you uh you have what it takes to be champion, be a face of this company. <laughs> Did you tell Vince McMahon that? And doesn't need Kofi's advice. They all dance together, do their old, do, hey, we want the new day a couple times. Just um, loosen them up and everything for what happens later in the night. So, next match is Damien Priest Open Challenge. Now, Damien Priest and WWE forgot how these open challenges should work. Damien Priest comes out to the ring, says, Open challenge to anybody but Sheamus because I got you on Extreme Rules. And then out comes his opponent. No, he issues the open challenge, and Jeff Hardy gets um, accepts the challenge before the show even happens. Now, if it wasn't for what happened last week and the out, oh, this this is WWE's make good. Oh shit, we fucked up sending Jeff Hardy, a WWE legend, the only man in this company to hold every single championship this outside of the cruiserweight title and the universal title. In this company's history, from 1997 to 2021, he has at one time in his career held every single fucking championship outside of the Cruiserweight title, because he wasn't a Cruiserweight, and the Universal title. How could you disrespect a legend like him with that crap last week? They went, oh shit, we, did that. we fucked up and everyone's pissed, so we're going to give him a U.S. Championship match. So WWE's like, oh no, we fucking got stupid. We gotta fix this. So we're gonna put him in this match, and we're gonna give him 10 minutes at the most, maybe? 
Now, it was a good match, but it's like, how could you get excited for this after what they did last week? I can't. It's like you. It's like WWE showed their hand last week. They showed what they really think of the of this man being in WWE. They don't give a flying fuck about this man, about Jeff Hardy. He needs to leave. He really needs to leave. There is no reason this guy is even in WWE right now. What's the point? If you're just going to go out there and be part of the men and who go around, running around, chasing the 24-7 joke, why are you in WWE? I don't, I just don't get it. Was it a good match? Yeah, it was okay. I mean, it is Jeff Hardy, it is Damian Priest, they're both really good. Of course, Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy's got to be on his last legs of his career, and honestly, he needs to leave. Go to back. He can go back to Impact for all I care. He can go to Ring of Honor. He can go to AEW. I don't care, but he needs to go somewhere where his last few uh, last few days or um, years or months or whatever, the final leg of his career, can actually have a dignified ending and not, hey, this is Jeff Hardy, the living legend who want, who's once again held every championship in this company outside of the Cruiserweight Championship the, pre, the, pre, the current Cruiserweight Championship or the previous one in the Universal Championship. He has held every single main roster title since 1997 till 2021 except for the Universal title and the old Cruiserweight Championship that his brother has held. Now we're just going to like have him go out there and run around with the 24-7 stuff and eventually he'll be belittled and made um, be put down by the up-and-coming legend, uh, like newcomer that they have coming up eventually. That's the plan for WWE. That's what they're going to do with him. But it was a back-and-forth match. Of course, Sheamus was on commentary because he has the match on Sunday, by the way. Should he still be wearing that face protector? I don't know. Honestly, I think his nose is probably not broken anymore, but he's just going to use it for as long as he fucking feels like it. They tangle again. Priest hits the reckoning out of nowhere. One, two, three. It, did, it, it was botched because Jeff Hardy did not rotate at the same time um, Priest did. So he got spiked on his head more than he probably should have. And Damian Priest wins. Immediately, Jeff um, Sheamus rushes the ring, beats the fuck out of, and starts stomping the fuck out of Damian Priest. He kicks Jeff Hardy out of the ring. Goes for, some, goes for a bro kick, but eats one himself, which was not a pretty looking bro kick. And that was that. Nikki Churyosh and Ray Ripley are backstage. Nikki thinks that they need their own special celebration. Ripley says, now it's not a good time as she is focused on tonight's match and they need to focus on the titles. Which, again, they are not. They should not be the number one contenders because the number one contenders should be Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox, who beat these team, this team three motherfucking times, two of them being championship contender matches. They, all, they have words with each other. They have a brawl. Sonya Deville comes in and gets in between them. She says there will be a match between Natalya and Ripley to straighten this all out. It'll be, but before that, It'll be Snooker and Nikki. They all agree. Nikki's dancing the ridiculous superhero outfit. Fist in the air, seething. She storms off to the ring as we have Tamina versus Nikki A.S.H. Do you really think I gave a shit about this match? No, I did not. Did anybody give a shit about this match? Nikki wins. After the bell, the shot with the pinfall. Tamina takes Nikki to the floor. Ripley makes a save and gets dropped by the time he comes over. Tamina scoops Nikki up and launches her into the barrier. They pose as we go to commercial break. We come back. It's Natalia versus Rhea Ripley. Again, I don't care. The women's tag team titles in WWE are a fucking joke. They have been a joke. Vince McMahon... Like, you can, bug, you can bug Vince McMahon over and over and over again. And eventually be like, all right, fine. I'll give it. I'll give you what you want. And not give a shit afterwards. So, you had... Um... Becky Bailey and Sasha Banks bug him, nag him to get the women's tag team titles into fruition. He said, fine, I'll do that, fine, whatever, eventually after so many months. They had him created. And then Vince McMahon was like, we're not gonna, we don't give a fuck about these titles. We gave them what they want. Well, we as creative don't give a shit about these titles. We're gonna take them off from at WrestleMania. We're gonna give them fucking 
Billy Kay and um, Peyton Royce, a joke tag team. We're going to make that tag team look even more like a joke. And we're not going to give a damn about these titles. And since then, they have not given a damn. Bailey and Sasha Banks, of course, won them back again when they were both heels. And it just didn't, they just didn't, they didn't feel like the feel-good championship run they had that was going to see them go to NXT and defend the titles, which never happened because they lost in the Billy Kane Payton Royce. And then, of course, you know, all these other tag teams, Oscar, Tyree Sane, Nikki, um, Nikki Cross, and Alexa Bliss, which was Nikki Cross's best work with Alexa Bliss as well. And yeah, don't care. Natalia vs. Rare will be Natalia loses because, of course, she did. Because Nikki comes back down after being attended to in the back. Tamina looks to get involved. Nikki drops, um, trips up Natalia. Now, this is what I don't get in the end of this. Because Tamina is walking around to go t take care of Nikki. Natalia is down and vulnerable. Instead of going to uh, take care, uh, capitalize on this, Rhea Ripley decides, I'm going to drop kick Tamina, allowing Natalya to get the upper hand and possibly win this match. In the end, Riptide, a, a prism trap, I'm sorry, prism trap, which is the reverse clo cloverleaf. Mm -hmm. And she makes Natalya tap out to this move. I've never seen her make anybody tap out. It just doesn't look like something you would be tapping out to. That's just my opinion. Hey, look, another wasteful match. The New Day, Mustafa Ali, Mansoor vs. Day Just Styles, Omar Space, and T-Bar. All you have to do to talk about this is basically this. Before that match, Shabbat was in the back. She got pissed off the fact that the, the, the Charlie doll was there. Took it, threw it in the trash. That's probably going to come back to bite her later on. All you have to do to tell about this match is Omar tagged in. Cleaned house. Everyone, all four guys tried to take him down. It didn't work. And he powerbombed the living shit out of Ali for the pin in the win. Omos, in my opinion, feels like Great Kali 2.0. Or 1.5. He's the black great, great Kali, and that's about it. That's all you need to know. Omos, AJ Styles, and Mason t Bar get the win. Nothing about to it. We get a Pizza Hut sponsored video looking at Bobby Lashley's dominance and Kevin Patrick approaches MVP of Lashley backstage. He asks if Biggie's presence is a distraction. MVP is absolutely not, and Biggie being here is more of an annoyance, not a distraction. He goes on about how Lashley is focused on hurting Randy Orton and obtaining his title and decides to cash in. It'll be the worst career choice he's ever made. Biggie interrupts with loud booze. He says he's just playing, but he's not playing when, he's coming, when he says he's fully intent on cashing in his briefcase. He walks off yelling about how he can't wait. And I was so sure the way that they had Big E all over this show that they were going to bait and switch us. I honestly felt like him because that's just Vince McMahon's MO. It's like, oh, I got you in. I don't have to deliver because I got you watching to see if Big E's going to cash in. This next match again, another waste of a show, a match. Piper Nevin versus Eva Marie. Why does Eva Marie have a contract? Can someone explain this to me? Why does Eva Marie have a fucking valid contract? She can't work. She's mic skills suck. She's stage present is fucking terrible. This woman brings nothing positive to this company. Why does she have a fucking contract? Piper Niven wins an actual match with a crossbody on the mat. Not worth the time. Recorded backstage promo from Karrion Cross, who's wearing a suit. He speaks and says he's not telling us something we don't already know. Deep down, most of us don't know why we really are, but we do have an idea of who we want to be. It says no one finds their true nature until they're suffering or inflicting the suffering. But now the suffering I have generated is insatiable. We see some flashbacks of matches. Does everyone in this cross enjoy every second of his opponent's agony? How do we don't know his motives, his desires, or his ultimate plan? What if I don't know the answers, he says. What if this is all... He knows there is one certainty. He will hurt every single person in this place until there is no one left. And I get all that I want. I will not. I'm not here to get lost in the shuffle. Give that six months. Step by step, every week he is going to polarize everyone around here like clockwork until they learn to fall and pray. Gee, you know what would have helped this? One, Scarlet was there. Two, he didn't lose a Jeff Hardy in one minute and five seconds. 
back on his debut. And three, he didn't lose to Keith Lee a week, uh, two weeks later. How hard is that to figure out? Huh? How hard is that to figure out? If this guy was still undefeated on the main roster, only losing to Samoa Joe for the NXT, ta the NXT Championship at TakeOver 36, and still had that aura that he would uh, that he has, this would help this out. I don't buy that this motherfucker is going to do anything on the main roster. He's not here to get lost in the shuffle. Give it about six months when Vince McMahon gives up on this guy. He's just running for the 24-7 championship. It's a coming because Vince McMahon gives up so easily. WWE Championship match. Randy Orton versus Bobby Lashley. This was, it was a good match. Randy Orton did attack the leg. He beat up on Bobby Lashley's leg. Looks like he might have the match won with an RKO. He goes over to grab Bobby Lashley, but MVP pulls Lashley into the rope. Randy Orton goes outside, hits an RKO onto MVP, gets back into the ring, eats a spear. One, two, three. Bobby Lashley retains. Now, the fans are fully behind Randy Orton. Like, dude is so over right now as a babyface, even though we all know he's a natural born heel. It's just great, crazy to see how over this guy is as a big time heel. After the match, he stands tall. Riddle checks on Orton, but Lashley grabs him and tosses him to the floor. He follows up, scoops Riddle up, and runs him into the ring post. Riddle is laid out. Lashley grabs Orton and slants him through the announce table with a big spine bust that Orton is laid out on uh, in the debris. Lashley may, may have hurt his knee pulling Orton. He hurt his knee through the match. He limps uh, around and into the ring as the referee checks on him. Out comes Big E with the Money in the Bank briefcase. Lashley's like, no, no, this ain't happening. No, 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 no. Of course, we go to commercial break. We come back. Lashley is refusing to defend his title because of a knee injury. Valid point. Big, Big E goes up to him and just says, come on, come on, bitch. Slaps him. Just slaps the taste out of him. Tells He tells the referee and Lashley does to bring the bell. Takes him down, so it's beating up on him. They, he beats the hell out of Big, Big E into the corner. Big E somehow tries to get a big ending up. Doesn't happen. Spear, one, two, kick out. Looks like I'm like, oh shit, they're going to they're gonna fuck over Big E. But Big E eventually gets the big ending up. One, two, three. Big E is your new WWE champion. Bobby Lashley is out of the title picture. After the match, the crowd goes wild. Kofi and Xavier Woods immediately get in the ring, joining Big E. Race the title in the air. Pilot explodes in the air. We see Lashley limping up the ramp. Big E with his unmuckle pose. Raising the titles in the air as the fans go wild. Ben Rock goes off the air with Big E, celebrating his championship. I really want to be fucking elated and happy for Big E, but the way they did it. He comes out. He wants, a, he wants to cash it in. Why are we going to commercial break? Why are we going to commercial break? Just let it happen. Let it happen. Just ring the bell, start the match, get it over with. We do not need a fucking commercial break. Oh, that's right. We have about five minutes left. Because WWE doesn't know how to time their shit right. But now, Bobby Lashley, of course, over the month, the night, like, like the week after SummerSlam, said he's coming for Big E, for Bobby Lashley's soul. What this does is take the title off of Big E, so when they have their second match, the WWE title doesn't have to be a factor. The question I have is how much is WWE actually going to give a fuck about Big E as champion? They clearly did not give a fuck about Kofi Kingston as champion, especially with the way they ended it. They never, they like, the minute he won that championship, Vince McMahon is like, all right, when's Brock Lesnar taking this title off of Kofi? Oh, we got a mat. We have to go to. We're going to Fox in October. Let's do it on the premiere day. Two minutes flat. That was the game. That was going immediately. So we'll have to see how this goes for Biggie as champion. I'm happy, but I, w I wish I could be happier. But it it just doesn't hit right because it just it's WWE is desperate. They are absolutely desperate, and that just it the show. And everything reeked of desperation, and that's about it. But again, this was a one. This was a one match. This was a two match show. If you want to count Biggie's title match, win as a match. Other than that, the rest of the show you could skip, and you wouldn't miss a damn thing. 
But that is your WWE Raw review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Minds of the France Club. Find me on twitch.tv slash the France Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I will see you guys on Wednesday for AEW on TNT. One week before Stadium from Grand Slam. Until then, my name is the France, and I'll see you guys later.